Coffee is one of the most popular beverages in the world. It is a fruit, the second most exported good next to oil, and over 2 billion cups are consumed daily. Ever wonder how your coffee gets to you? We did! So to find out more, we investigated the commodity chains of two retail roasters in Berkeley, a small cafe called Artis and the popular Pete's Coffee and Tea. To start, let's define a commodity chain. It is a series of links connecting many places of production and distribution, resulting in a commodity that is then exchanged on the world market. For coffee, it comprises of a global chain involving a string of producers, middlemen, exporters, importers, roasters, retailers, and ultimately consumers. Both stores sell a single origin coffee from Guatemala. This country has a right variance of soil, rainfall, humidity, altitude, and temperature to produce seven distinct types of coffee. Coffee is Guatemala's third largest export, and the U.S. is Guatemala's biggest market, receiving half of its coffee exports. In Guatemala, approximately 60% of the population lives in poverty, forcing many adults and children to work on coffee plantations under extremely poor working and living conditions, long hours, and with little to no pay. This is the case for many Guatemalan coffee farms, but is undisclosed for Artis or Pete's coffee whether their beans are ethically grown. Let's see how coffee is produced. First, a farmer plants a coffee plant seed. After 9 to 18 months, the two foot tall trees are moved to a field where they begin to grow red fruit. The coffee trees are organized into different lots based on flavor and quality. Artesis Palhu single origin Guatemalan coffee comes from the Huehuetenango region, from a farm called Finca La Providencia. It is owned and operated by Maximiliano Palacios, a third generation coffee farmer. As for peats, they roast a single origin Guatemalan coffee from the Antigua region. It has been produced and bought by peats for the last 40 years and is grown by the farm Finca San Sebastian, owned by the La Falla family. The next link in the chain is the broker, aka the importer or middleman. Artis buys the Palhu coffee from an importing company called Royal Coffee. They are the connection to the farmers, exporters, co-ops, estates, fincas, and smallholder farms. <laughs> Royal brokers buy the processed green beans and are brought via ship to Royal's warehouse here in Oakland. In talking to one of their brokers, Kevin Morales, we learned that the relationship between Royal and the Palhu farm is over 15 years old, which in coffee years is a lot, due to the volatile nature of the coffee commodity. Unfortunately, we couldn't find information regarding whether or not Pete's directly trades with the San Sebastian farm or if they use a broker. Coffee is bought and sold on the New York Sea contract market, which is where coffee prices are set. The price of coffee fluctuates, but generally hovers around 50 cents per pound. Unless the coffee is fair trade, the price is either set by the sea market or negotiated between the farmer and broker. If the coffee is fair trade certified, it must be sold at a premium. This is to ideally provide a living wage for farm workers. The certification process is expensive and meticulous, so farm owners often do not pursue it, even if they already use fair trade practices. Both coffees we studied are conventionally grown without any certifications, including fair trade. The final component of the chain is the retail roasting process. Artis is unique in that they roast all their coffee on site in micro batches under three pounds. The customers can choose a region of coffee and have it roasted and bagged right then and there. Pete's claims that they roast small batches but are vague about the exact quantity. Their roasting facility is in Alameda and from there they air mail to their cafes and retail stores across the country. The Pete's plant can have at any given point up to half million pounds of green coffee stored. From there, the beans are roasted, bag on site, and shipped within one to two hours after roasting to ensure freshness. And that's how your single origin Guatemalan coffees get to you.